Let me say a couple of things here because I think it's important to identify everything going on into uh, this statement, into what I'm about to say. Because there's all sorts of weird things that are going to be crossed up here that I need to talk about that need to be put on the table because I think it's very uh, disingenuous not to. One, Gordon needs... I would like to think it's a friend of mine. Okay, Gordon Needs is somebody who has done personal favors from me for me. He has gone and spoken. Uh, when I've asked him to go and speak at certain places, Gordon has done it. Uh, Gordon is a really, really good guy. And a guy that I, I think conducts himself with the utmost professionalism as anybody I've come across and worked with in my life. Second... I understand that this radio station in Market 181 in Manchester is nothing compared to what the Boston stations carry for an audience. I also understand that I am 35 years of age in such a market. I get it. I also know that I have a connection to ESPN here with this radio station. I also have a connection to WEEI. I also work for them part-time at times. So, I understand with what I'm about to say, it's going to sound like I'm trying to protect Gordon Eads. But I hope you will understand that I would say what I'm about to say, regardless of my connections, my jobs, my affiliations, simply because of the first statement that I made, that Gordon Eads is a personal friend and a guy who I think is one of the most professional writers, broadcasters, anything you want to say in the media of anybody I've ever come across. So this morning, when I heard 98.5's morning show, Toucher and Rich, who are a bunch of sports yahoos, very good at being yahoos, but they're yahoos, all right? They're not real hardcore sports guys. I think they would admit that they're not real hardcore sports guys. They do bits. They're really, really funny. All right. But in order for bits to work, sometimes you need someone to play along. You need someone to go along with the gag. And if the thing that you build up falls flat, what do you do? Plan B. You got to find plan B real quick. And sometimes you're stupid about it. And sometimes you wind up saying something really, really stupid because you're being stupid. The morning show sent one of the guys, Rich, whose last name I'm not even going to shirt leave, whatever you want, how you say it, sent him to the Bobby Valentine pregame, pregame, not post, pregame press conference. Bobby meets with the media before and after every game. He also tried to get into the locker room, but couldn't do so because he didn't realize that when the Red Sox give you a a press pass, only certain members of the media are allowed into the locker room. Beat writers. So when you're just, I don't know, a Yahoo, they don't let you in. Are you a media member? Sure. Media members can be Yahoos, but Yahoos aren't allowed to go into the clubhouse. So he was stopped by the security guard when he tried to go into the locker room pregame. But he had a chance to go into the Bobby Valentine press conference. He sits down. He describes it as a 20 second lull in which nobody is asking a question, which is really not that abnormal. If you've been to press conferences before, it's really not that crazy for the subject, whoever it might be, to sit down and certain media members are going to either wait for a senior member to ask a question or for the guy to make a public comment to start the conversation up. Sometimes a guy sits down and just starts talking or he says questions or somebody says, hey, Bobby, what about tonight's starting pitcher? You know, what what do you expect out of Lester tonight? Or, hey, Bobby, you know, the Yankees are in town. A bunch of New York media is here in the room with us. You know, what do you think? Unfortunately, Rich decides to ask a question that was posed to him by one of his listeners. Their whole idea was to go to 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 this press conference and to fire a question at Bobby Valentine. The question basically was, If you had to make a case to the fans as to why you should be the manager of the Boston Red Sox next year, what would you say to them? Bobby Valentine answered, quote, I feel bad for those fans. I don't have to make a case for them, though. I suffered with them. Rich followed up. What would you want to say to them if you do come back to make them believe next year there will be a different result? Valentine, I'm the best man for the job. 
Now, the question in itself, what was asked, is not a horrible question, but in the context of that place, with New York media there, and the fact that you're not exactly a guy that shows your face all that often, and you're asking a question that you know is provocative, to steal a line from Bryce Harper, it's a clown question, bro. It's stupid to ask that question In that spot, it doesn't make any sense. You're trying to elicit a response from Bobby Valentine. Maybe it's because, oh, I don't know, Bobby got into a heated argument with your rival on their afternoon show. So maybe you're trying to come up with, how can we get under Bobby's skin? Well, Bobby won't talk to us. Well, what if I go to the press conference? Like it's some panty raid or something that you did in high school. It's some like, you know, dark secret that you're going to walk in there and we, you know, you're I'm the outsider, you know. I'm I'm Lord of the Rings and I'm I'm coming after this. And I'm going to go storm, you know, the, the 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 eye of Mordor. That Bobby Valentine is some big thick dark cloud. Congratulations. You're so special. You're such a uh, you know, and, and he tried, you know, Touch and Rich this morning tried to make it out like the media didn't want them there. I think most people in the media couldn't have cared less that they were there. And I think most people in the media, because they're on radio, had no idea who he was until he identified himself with a question. I think most camera operators and most people in the media who maybe haven't gone around all that often in the media would have no idea who this Yahoo is. We do, because we watch television, radio, we're in the business. But the average person, the average media person that doesn't actually pay attention, I don't know if they really knew who he was. I'm almost positive Bobby had no idea who he was. Just by the way he answered the question, Bobby had no idea who the guy was. But Bobby didn't take the bait. He didn't take the bait. So that gets to the point of, what, Matt, why'd you bring this up? I bring this up because of what was said by Toucher and Rich when Bobby didn't take the bait. They needed a villain. They needed some way to make noise. And the only way to make noise is to find that boogeyman. And to them, it was our friend Gordon Eats, who wrote, in my opinion, a very benign recap of what Rich did. But what set them off, and it was not Rich, by the way, who went off. It was the other Yahoo deciding to toss really personal insults that you're hearing in a second about Gordon Eats. The line that ticked him off, radio talk show hosts don't typically show up for pregame sessions. Very true. Never seen one there. Not that I go there all that often. But Valentine presented WEEI's Glenn Ordway with a gift soundbite last week. So perhaps EEI's rivals were looking for the same. Yes, they were. If so, they probably went away disappointed. True. Bobby didn't take the bait. Thus... Let's create the boogeyman. What an overinflated sense of what you're doing. What a jerk this guy is. Oh, I hope I don't run into him. I called him a jerk. Ooh, he writes for ESPN on the website. Better not anger him. We're all a big team. Oh, I have so much respect for you guys going in there every day and talking to the players. Whoa. And then regurgitating a blurb about what they said. Hachi machi. What a, what a life you got. Toucher had a follow-up. Oh, Gordon, his name's Rich Shirtenly. I'm Toucher. See? Oh, oh, what a neat mistake you made. Oh, I feel like so low. Here I am just hosting a four-hour radio show when I should be a big-time blogger on ESPN at all the games. Toucher had a follow-up. What would you want to say to them, blah, blah, blah? Radio talk show hosts don't typically show up for pregame sessions. Yeah, and when they do, it blows your mind. But Valentine presented WEI's Glenn Ordway with a gift soundbite last week, so perhaps EEI's rivals were looking for the same. That's right, Gordon. What? That's what Rich wanted, was to Valentine to just blow up on him. You hit the nail on the head. Better give your guys at EEI a nice pat on the back, because they cover ESPN programming, and ESPN guests can't come on our station better give your boys a little pat on the back you prick you condescending prick that's just great that's exactly what rich was looking for a plus reporting gordon way to get it on there at 6 35 in the afternoon hooray i hope you're if, if you've listened to this station long enough you've heard gordon needs at some point in time 
to call Gordon Eads a condescending blank, I'm not even going to re- show it any respect by saying the word, is one of the more ridiculous things I've heard in a long time. And it is flat out desperation. What's so weird about people in our industry now is that when something doesn't go the way you want it to go, meaning that bit, Republic Valentine, okay? That they had planned that for a while. Ooh, hey, call us. And I guess what I'm gonna ask Bobby Valentine a question. Like there's some sixth grade girl waiting for a boy to ask them to a to a dance. And, and sitting by the phone and hoping that their that their little minions call up. They're 22 year old sophomoric idiots who are seniors in college who sit around and worship at the altar of Toucher and Rich, who by the way drive their numbers like crazy. I get it. Not necessarily a good thing, to be quite honest. Because you start playing to the lowest common denominator. And you start losing the fact that there are people who have come before you. And maybe it's because, which one of them is from here? Do we know? One of them's not. Uh, Well, we know that Fred Toucher's not. I'm not He's not from here. He's from Detroit, Detroit, right? Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure about Rich. Gordy needs, uh, he's my age, right? Fred Toucher's my age, right? He's 35, 36. Okay. Gordy needs has been covering baseball in this town, in this market, for 22 years. So while he was popping zits, Gordon Deeds is covering the Red Sox. And you're going to call him a condescending what? I mean, you've got to be off your rocker because Gordon Deeds actually wrote something about what you did. Wasn't that the point? Was for you to get attention? Was it, weren't you trying to get people to, to pay attention to you? Isn't that what you always do? Isn't that all, all they do is constantly cry for attention? Isn't that why they send their Yahoo idiots, whatever that little high-pitched blob they send out there to interview, quote, pink hats? Isn't that what they do? Isn't it all about attention? Let's show how stupid people are. <laughs> Let's show these people who are drunk and idiotic. Yeah, that's so funny. Why? Because 22-year-olds who hang out with drunk girls all the time find it fun. It's amazing. But look, I've worked in other parts of the country where I wasn't from there. And I've made big time mistakes because I pointed out things that I was ignorant to. And if there's one guy you don't go near in this market, in my opinion, maybe two guys. Peter Gammons would be a guy that I wouldn't call a condescending prick. I wouldn't call Peter Gammons that. And I wouldn't call Gordon Eads that either. Because Gordon Eads has been around this market a whole lot longer than these idiots. And it's amazing to me. I get what 98.5 stick is. I totally understand it. And again, I'm going to say it in the beginning because I made it in the beginning. I talked about this. I have ties to EEI. So I have a obvious bias when it comes to this. Fine. But oh my God, Gordon Eads is a guy you're going to come after and go after because he wrote something on the ESPN blog about what you did. Isn't that the point? You wanted people talking about you and when your little gag blew up in your face because bobby didn't take the bait what did you do you decide to find the villain the boogeyman has to be somebody so it's gordon eads right it's gordon eads who you knew wouldn't respond that's what pisses me off even more they knew of all the people they could go after gordon eads is above you Gordon Eads has more class than you do. So you can say this about Gordon, and he's not going to respond. He's not going to talk about it. He's not going to talk about you. He's not going to say or sink to your level, and they know it. So why am I ranting about that? This is why I'm ranting about that, because Gordon won't say it. So, sorry, again, this is a pea shooter at a cannon, okay? I'm going to a shotgun fight with a butter knife. I get it. I I know where we are. I know what we do. I know how we do it. I'm very proud of what we do, but we're not on a 50,000 watt FM radio station. I get that. They're making five times, 10 times the income that I'm making. I get it. 